former professional cyclist Patrick Yonker rode in Lance Armstrong's US Postal Service team in 2000 and he joins me now from Adelaide. Patrick Yonker, thank you for your time. Now you rode with the team at the centre of the storm and with Lance Armstrong. Did you see any doping? No, no, I never saw doping during my time which was the year at 2000 from January until December um, with my time with the US Postal Service. Okay, and I do have to ask you for the record just because this is such a massive story. Have you ever doped? No, no, I've never doped and um, it never crossed my mind. Okay, now Matthew White is the focus today, but the story really is about Lance Armstrong. How do you feel about him being at the centre of all this? Oh, it's a definitely a catastrophe for the sport at the moment. Um, we hope that we'll have more answers these coming um, few weeks. I think there's no place to hide. I think... Um, if somebody has done the wrong thing in the past, that uh, it will come up in these following few days or weeks. Um, but also, you know, there are people, there are a lot of writers like myself, um, like Julian Dean, who spoke out last night, um, that um, never did the wrong thing or thing and always did the right thing and um, raced cleanly. And, um, you know, people like Julian and myself would just like to, you know, uh, get the message across that it wasn't um, every single rider. That's that's right, because so much of the sport itself is really being tainted by these allegations and obviously uh, we're talking about a few people, but it is an era, an era which one former uh, US postal writer said yesterday that doping wasn't the exception, it was the norm. Can you explain a little bit about that era and about that, those years that you were writing, that year you were writing and why it was such, the, such a norm at the time? Uh, I think, um, you know, calling it a norm would... Uh um, you know, there were a lot of great performances during that period that were uh, achieved on bread and water. Um, some fantastic performances by Australian riders, um, by European and American riders that were all done naturally. But there was a grey area, there was or a black area, I could say. They could not detect blood boosters as accurately as they can today. So we had limits. We were not an athlete would have a blood test and the red blood cell count or hematocrit um, could not go over 50%. And um, if you were over 50%, that would um, um, give an indication that you had taken EPO or a blood booster. So, but the problem was there are many athletes out there who have very low natural red blood cells and have very low hematocrit, which in a way, it's not giving um, the go-ahead to dope, but in a way, there's sort of that grey area where they couldn't be caught, and I think that was a problem during that era of cycling. Right, I mean, those grey areas really are the question here, aren't they? Because often doping itself, the tests for picking up dopers lag behind the dopers themselves. So how do then we know that the sport is clean now, and how do we know that there aren't other similar tactics going on at the moment? Yep, so what has changed between um, the era, um, 99, 2005, and... Uh, especially before that, during the mid-90s. Um, all the tools the governing body had was to look, in a way, at the thickness of the blood. And nowadays, we can say that um, cycling at the Tour de France level is now clean, and I think Cadell Evans uh, winning the Tour de France was, was a great example of how it is possible to win a Tour de France on bread and water, and also uh, Bradley Wiggins. And why we can say that is because what they do today is totally different to what they did during that period of time. So today, um, each single um, professional cyclist has a blood profile, has a blood passport. So they don't just look at hematocrit, don't just look at red blood cells, they actually look at reticulocytes, they look at the young baby red blood cells. They have so many parameters nowadays that sports scientists and doctors, and actually we have to thank um, the Australian Institute of Sport of their um, input into this, they have developed this uh, program of detecting and cheats. So what we can say is for the last few years at the Tour de France, for especially the last two, it would be impossible basically due to the blood profiling which they do today, which they never have done in the past. Right, so let's talk about that era from 1999 to 2005. You have called for that entire era of the Tour de France to be made void. Why is that? Yeah, so my opinion, well, my personal opinion is that... Um, during that period of time, they could not accurately detect whether a person's uh, red blood cell count was natural or boosted up until the 50% mark, which which is so many um, anomalies associated with that. So to give the Tour de France title to the second place or third place or fourth place, um, we're not 
percent sure they were clean and those riders themselves are not actually putting their hand up asking for the title so if Lance Armstrong is to lose the title um, I believe and also I think the organisers of the Tour de France also believe as well that there will be no replacement winner. Right now you've actually come out in support of Lance Armstrong in a way and saying that you can't really demonise one person you really need to look